3. This one is story 3, Stick in the Mud. The manager was as good as his word, Scarlowy continued. I came home from the works with six wheels and a cab. A cab is the latest thing for engines, he told me. I hope it will cheer you up after your disappointment. Renee's chuckled. <laughs> it cheered him up too much, and those silly coaches made him worse. Such a handsome engine, they tittered. Six wheels and a cab. So distinguished, my dears. It's a pleasure to see him. And he soon got too big for his wheels. Scarlowy smiled ruefully. I did too, he said. Go on, Renes. He boasted about his cab till I was tired. Said Renes. You should get one like me and be up to date, he would say. No, thank you. I said. You look like a snail with that house on your back. And you don't go much far, fast, much faster either. So am I. Let me tell you who was late three times last week. Oh, it's no use talking. You're just an old stick in the mud. He called me more names and we quarrelled. And we ended up back to back, not speaking. It went on for days and days. But one dark Monday morning, Scarlow had to take the workman's train to the quarry. It had rained for three days. You always pick on me for wet days, he complained. You, said Mr. Robbie, have got a cab to keep us dry. So come on. Scarlow snipped and snorted on the wet rails. He began to wonder if cabs were worth it. An hour later, I was warming up when Scarlow's guard came coasting down in an empty truck. He stopped by our shed. There's a landslide beyond the tunnel, he said. Scarlow's run into it and he's stuck. Show we were near, look lively. I'm sorry, Mr. Pierce, sir, but that Scarlow is too swanky. He says I'm a stick in the mud. He can join well stick in the mud himself. It serves him right. But, went on my driver, there's poor Mr. Bobby and the quarrymen. Does it serve them right too? The guard says the mud's like treacle. Oh dear, he said. Oh dear, I said, that will never do. We must save them before we, they get stuck, sucked in. And off we puff with two trucks and some workmen. Things weren't too bad after all. The men had partly cleared the line and had levered Scarlowy back. He was hissing and grumbling dreadfully, but we didn't listen to him. We cleared the rest of the line, and I pushed Scarlowy out of the way before taking the quarry men to work. Mr. Bobby cleaned all of his wheels in motion, so that when I returned with the coaches, I could help him back to the shed. I'm sorry I was swanky, he said at last. Thank you for helping me. Not at all, I said, but I was still cross. Then Scarlowy began to laugh. Oh, I'm the stick in the mud after all, he goes helplessly. Not you. I laughed too. I couldn't know, but he looked so funny. We were laughing when the cleaners came, and we were still laughing when they left. Poor engines, they said, having their voids. But we weren't mad. We had learned sense, and we've been firm friends ever since. It was nearly dark. The listeners stirred and stretched. Thank you, Scarlowy and Renes, they said. Now you've told us about the old days. We can give you both a splendid birthday next week.